Good morning, kids. Uh, welcome back to the Art of Keith Busher Precious Mutations tutorial. This is our second tutorial. This, uh, if you remember, a couple days ago we uploaded this piece uh, here. We are going to upcycle it into uh, a creature of Cthulhu coming through this magical porthole here. And this poor kid uh, praying, uh, hoping that he survives the night as the demigod approaches. So you saw in the last tutorial how hard it was um, to take this clay off. I managed to finally get it all off. I actually used like a top cut, which is a form of grinder with a big sanding disc on it. That's, and it still took me a couple of minutes to get through that clump of clay. You can see there was no glue adhesion. It's just the epoxy itself. But even this thin, it's like almost impossible to get off. That's it's quality stuff there. That's the Aves Epoxy Sculpt clay that we use. Um, if you want to purchase some and follow along with our tutorials, you can find their stuff at avesstudio.com, A-V-E-S-S-T-U-D-I-O.com. And uh, I highly recommend it. Um, I've had a few questions on it through my Facebook page, which is also the Art of Keith Busher Precious Mutations, comparing it to uh, some other materials, tabletop gamers who use like green stuff. Uh, I started using green stuff. Um, it's not a bad product. I just um, found it a little bit rubbery and the adhesive uh, not quite what I needed. And uh, I also found that it was far more expensive than the epoxy sculpt when push comes to, co comes to shove. Um, you get far more stretch out of your epoxy sculpt than you get. You can buy it in like one pound, two pounds, four pounds, and it's... It goes a long, long way. I'll buy a tub and it'll take me months to go through it. And I sculpt like pretty much as often as I can. Today is a short video. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time on my hands. Uh, life tends to get in the way sometimes. But uh, I wanted to show you the next step. I spent the last couple of days trying to figure out kind of how I was going to move forward with this piece. Um, because it can get a little bit tricky. So as you see, there's nothing behind here to support. Remember, we're gonna have the tentacles come through. Uh, and uh, we're gonna have a big eye up here, maybe some fingers holding the windowsill, that sort of thing. Um, but there's nothing on the back here, right? We can go right through that. Um, so it's kind of hard to build this out when you don't have something to push against on the back. Uh, I don't want it too bulky. I don't want it too big. I don't want to make too big of an impact on this piece because I think subtle is better. So uh, brainstorming with myself over the last uh, couple of days, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to build a temporary backer that I can put on here and fix onto here and then sculpt into kind of like a cavity to still give us that 3D effect but then be able to take that backer off and just put a bit of a clay backer on it so that it looks um, better. But we need something, when you're sculpting, when you're building, you need to be able to push against something, you know, to get your clay in there. You need to be able to push against something to get whatever material you're using in there. So here's what I came up with. Again, uh, I am self-taught, so this may or may not be the right way. If you are professionally taught or you can think of a different way, whatever works for you. Um, but these are tips that I, I think of and stuff that I want to try. If you think I should do it a better way, I'm all ears. Please uh, send me a message because I'm all about making my life easier too. So what I'm going to do as my temporary backer is this purple insulating styrofoam here. Um, you can get this stuff at like Home Depot. I don't remember how much it is for a full sheet of it, but a full sheet is like four feet by eight feet and it goes a long way. You can get it in different depths. This is, uh, I think this is five eighths by the looks of it. And uh, so my plan is to put the piece down on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace out the window and then I'm gonna carve into the foam down about half an inch or so so that I have that depth. Then what I can do is I can take this piece away, I can start sculpting what I want to sculpt in here, and then once I've got that sculpted, because it's a styrofoam and stuff, I can just kind of break it off, scrape it off, um, in the same way you would a form, 
like if you were making resin form or something, I can just break that off and then I should have the sculpture piece, which will be the perfect size to fit on this. I can then attach it to the back here inside the window and then create another clay barrier that will go over the back, flatten it out and hold it to the rest of the piece. Uh, might not make sense right now, but uh, if you watch and follow along, and then you might see what I'm talking about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I am going to trace that shape. Like I said, this will be a very short video because I won't make you watch me carving everything out. All right, I pull that away. Boom, there's our window shape. So then I'm just going to take my knife, my hobby knife, and because I want it to go deep, normally, sometimes you can go on an angle, but uh, because I want it to kind of just go straight back and we're going to fill this with clay, I'm just going to trace that line. I'm going to go to the outside of the line, not the inside, because if I go to the inside, then the piece that I sculpt is going to be too small. If you go to the outside of the line, then you're going to have that bleed line. Um, artists and, and painters and stuff know what that bleed line is and what that bleed line is is there's a little bit of extra on the outside that doesn't get seen but it ensures that you don't end up with like dead space or white or or you know nothing at all um, before you hit the edge of your frame in which in our case is the window right so I'm just going to I'm going to go through it a couple of times, slowly, carefully. A good place to find this insulating stuff, actually, if you're looking for upcycling instead of purchasing from, like, Home Depot and stuff, is sometimes if you have, like, um, I don't know if you have, uh, if you have them down in the States or not, but we have, like, uh, restores, which are, um, like a habitat for humanity kind of thing and what it is is um, construction companies and stuff that that end up with excess uh, drop off to these places so it's all building materials it's like cabinet doors that they've taken out of apartments or stuff and instead of taking it to landfill and throwing it away they take it to these restores and uh, the restores uh, resell it at a cheaper cost and the money goes to like like I said habitat for humanity so it's a really good system, right? Like everybody wins in that situation. I've gotten some really interesting, it's a great place if you're looking for like canvases and stuff to um, sculpt on or to, to uh, paint on. Then it's a great resource for like floor tiles, random floor tiles and, and pieces of wood flooring and, and cool stuff like that. Okay, so now that I've cut kind of down and in. I'm going to give you a brief kind of showing. You can use a different tool and just start kind of pulling this stuff away. You're going to have to do kind of like a combination uh, knife, scraper. Don't, don't force the knife, um, you know, because you don't want it to go and slice your finger. Um, never like push force your knife more than you can control. I always keep like my hand on the table and I'm always cutting with my fingers because that way my whole hand is not going to slip. The most I can go is like eh, like that and my other hand is way over here so I'm going to be all right. They make like hot wire tools and stuff that you can do this with too. I'm trying a new setup today. Let me know how you guys think about the new camera angle. Um, my, it's a little bit wobbly because it's kind of a one of those wire ones. But I thought maybe with the overhead view it would be a little easier for you guys to see. If you see any green lines like down here, that's because I'm trying to figure out where my blocking is so that I don't accidentally slide out of the video. So anyways, you're going to start to see up here kind of that empty cavity. It doesn't have to be, if you want to make it nice and smooth, you can, but it doesn't have to be super smooth because this is all going to be on the back of our, 
our sculpted piece anyway. All we're trying to do is get the basic general outline, the shape that we want of that window so that we know we're not building something too small or too, too large. We know that this is kind of our, um, our canvas, our window to work with kind of thing. Okay, so anyway, I'm not gonna make you watch me do this because it's a little bit tedious and a little bit long-winded, but um, here you can start to see the idea of what I'm talking about. So we're creating a cavity in which we're gonna sculpt. So everything that we're gonna sculpt for this piece is gonna be inside this cavity, it needs to be inside this cavity. If we want tentacles and fingers and stuff that are coming out of the window, they're not gonna be in this cavity because it's gonna be hard to kind of once it's all hard and set and everything, it's going to be very hard to kind of get it in there and around this window. So what we're going to build is up to this point, and we're going to leave certain spots so that then we can add the tentacles coming out of the window, the fingers coming over the edge, but that's all going to be done after we apply it to the back, okay? So keep that in mind. Anyway, I'm going to keep plugging away at this so I can have it ready for you tomorrow so that I can show you kind of what the finished product is going to look like. Um, and then once I'm done that, then we can actually start doing the sculpting process of our Cthulhu creature. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe, and we're going to make lots of really cool things coming up. Um, this is a, a ceramic figurine alteration. Our other, our other one on the go right now is our skull sconce one, and that one's pretty cool. It's coming along pretty good. And then uh, I have a few other ideas, like we're going to modify a nutcracker. I have a really big, really cool Cthulhu one that I'm going to do. So, uh, yeah, if you've got crafty friends and you like watching how-to videos, please, um, you know, send them along. Tell them to come check us out. Like and subscribe. Let me know that I'm doing all right. Let me know what you think of the new camera angle. Uh, once again, I only ever use Abe's Epoxy Sculpt because it's my favorite product. I'm not sponsored by them. I just like to tout, toot their horn. Um, maybe someday they'll they'll hear me. Um, and yeah, and it's uh, Keith Busher at Precious Mutations. Uh, the Art of Keith Busher, Precious Mutations on Facebook, at Precious Mutator on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you very much for following along, and uh, we'll see you soon.